there's so many different platforms you can use to create an online community or host your online courses. And today we are going to try out school. School is based on community building, but there is a course component that I'm going to utilize. The closest comparable option to school I think is Circle. And if you're interested in checking that out instead, we do have a previous video about that that I'll link in the cards. For now, we are on the school website and we're looking at all the available communities that they already offer, but I'm going to choose to create my own today. The first 14 days are free and then you pay the $99 a month that is the subscription option. It'll ask you to choose a name for your group, but you can change this later, so don't think too hard about it. Right now, we're just going to do the initial setup. Once you have entered your card information and the name of your group, this is the page you will be taken to. It asks you to invite your first three people add the group description, set a cover image, and write your first post. So let's go ahead and upload a cover photo just for the sake of the video and get some of this filled out. You'll be able to choose if you want your group to be private or public. I prefer to keep them private since I want to invite people, especially initially until we have all of the stuff set up in here. Um, but you can choose public if you want this to be a group that anyone can join or find. You can still have a say in who joins, but this would make it publicly available on internet searches and on the school discover tab. This is also where you can choose a custom URL. So you can make this whatever you would like, either your brand name, but more than likely you want it to match the name of your group. You won't be able to claim your URL until you upgrade and actually pay and you are off of your free trial. So for now, we're going to leave the URL that it included. But if you want to secure that or if it's a more common name that you want to make sure you save, then you will want to do that right away. Next, we need to find out our subscription tiers and we need to decide on what we're going to offer for our members. We'll need to connect our payment accounts to this so that we can actually start accepting payments through school and be able to set up the tiers. So if you click on that and continue, you'll be able to select your bank account. Once you have your Stripe account hooked up, you will be able to start taking payments for different setups and subscriptions. So let's go back to the group and get those set up now. These prices are completely up to you and based on the content and the value that you're gonna provide within the group. If that's something that you're struggling with, we do have a video about how to price your services that may be helpful. Again, we will link to those in the cards. Within the subscription page, you'll be able to add in a retention video, which will essentially be a video that can help reduce the amount of people who are canceling their subscription to your group. So you can make a video just reminding them of all of the benefits of the group or just thanking them for their time. Either way, this can really help with the retention and it's well worth taking the time to create a simple video. You can upload it to YouTube or Vimeo and then pop the link into here. This can be a helpful tab to help organize the discussions that are going on within your group. If your group is going to surround a wider topic, for example, business owners, you may want to break this down into multiple different categories like tech stacks, questions, maybe some promotional material, whatever you want to break it down to is totally fine. General discussions will be there by default and you can always add categories as you go and as the conversations kind of evolve and you want to break them up. I like to add a category for general discussions, one for announcements and one for questions. For the announcements category, I choose only admins and mods being able to post to that. That way announcements are strictly from the admin and all the members can see announcements only from those people who are actually in charge of the group. And then for questions, we want anyone to be able to post and pose their questions to the entire group, even though admins may be the ones mostly responding. In the tabs category, you can choose what you want to show in your different tabs. So if you aren't offering a course, this is where you would turn off the classroom option. For me, I'm not going to be offering any live sessions, so I'm going to turn off the calendar option because there's really no need. There are a bunch of integrations that school offers natively with their app. We're not going to go into all of these today because they're so specific to your own case, but Zapier is one that I recommend for most people, especially if you want members to be auto added to a group. Maybe if they're purchasing your membership off the school website and you want to auto add them into the membership group after the fact. This is what I'll be doing when people purchase off of my Squarespace website. I will automatically be adding them into the school course with Zapier. Metrics is a great way just to see your analytics, see how many people are having conversations when they join and the activity of the group. And gamification is another great way to help with the retention of your group, especially if they're paying monthly subscription fees. The gamification in a school is one of the main reasons people choose school over other options like Circle. And this is because members who are active in the groups are more likely to continue paying for the groups. 
I highly recommend adding incentivization methods to different levels within here just to help your members get little rewards along the way. This is a great way to offer bonus calls or trainings throughout your course and just give everyone a little bit more reason to stay active. Adding links to relevant resources is another great way to just offer your community a little bit more information. My course is going to be about teaching stay-at-home moms how to become virtual assistants. So offering links to different resources or tools or discount codes to different websites that might be helpful can be a great way to give them a few other things that are really helpful. To add a link, you just create the label. This is what all of them will see. And then you post in the URL to that relevant link. You can make these links public or private. So if you are posting something like affiliate links, you may want those to be public. For me, I'm gonna post this as a private link and just add it in there. These links will show up in the right sidebar underneath the title, URL, and the description of your course. The invite link, you'll be able to see the group link for your new group and you'll be able to see what it looks like for visitors or for someone who signed in when they're first jumping in here. Your about page is what people will see when they first go to this link. So I highly recommend adding a welcome video in here or a video explaining what the community is and adding a detailed description so they know exactly what to expect when they get inside. We're going to leave that for now and go into the classroom section to create our first course. When I click on new course, I'm going to have the option to add the name and then choose when it is unlocked. This can be made private so that you can just give specific members access. This is great if you have a lot of courses and members can buy specific courses through your website or some other mean. You can also have a time to unlock, which will allow them to access the course after a certain number of days of joining your member group. This is great if you want to retain members and maybe they gain course access after each month that they're in there. You can choose to sell your courses as a one-time fee and allow members to unlock that course once they're actually in the community group. This is what I am using on one of my other communities and it's really effective. And then level unlock, like we talked about previously, adding different tiers into your levels will help retain people. And so you can give them specific access as it is unlocked. This one is going to be the general course. So I'm going to leave this one open. So anyone who joins the group can access this course and start to get the content. You can also choose if you want the course to be published immediately or made into a draft. This is great if you already have members, but you're adding new courses. Since we don't have any members right now, I'm going to go ahead and mark this as published and add the course so I can start adding content. This will open directly into the course page where you can then edit the course, add pages, add folders, or delete it. We're gonna start with one new page by default, so let's make this our welcome page. This will offer a markdown style formatting where you can add headers, add code injections, photos, links, dividers, and video. You'll be able to edit the content of the course at any time by using the little pencil icon and adding in additional information. You can also add resource links, files, transcripts, and pin these to a community post if that's something that you would like to do. This is great if you created a portion of the course in response to community post, or if the community post has resources that are relevant to the topic. You would just go to add, pin community post, and then you choose the post that you want to pin in this course. Resource links work the same way as on the main course page. So it's just the label and the URL. Resource files can be uploaded. So let's upload an image, for example, and then we can create a label for it. They can now click to open the file and choose to download it. Now that this page is done, let's add a folder to this course just to break these up a bit. When we make our folder, it's going to be empty. So we need to add a page in that folder. Let's add a part two in here, save that and have it publish. Now, if we go back to the classroom tab, we'll be able to see our new course that we created. And when you open it up, you'll be able to see the introductions where they can check to mark it as done and open up different sections to view each section of the course. When they've completed a course, they'll be able to see their progress bar on the bottom of that course load. Let's create a level course to show you what that's going to look like. We're gonna call this level four. See that access starts at level four. And now we can go back to our main page into our settings and go to our gamification tab. We can now see that level four allows the level four course to unlock. We can also give each of our levels a name. So this can make it a little bit more fun. You can either do it on topic or just think of more fun ideas. You can also add emojis in here just to make it a little bit more fun and make them stand out a bit, especially as you get to the higher levels. Other members can see their level and that can be a fun way to just identify the people that are most active in your group. Let's turn calendars back on so I can show you how these work just in case you want to have live events. 
In our calendar menu, we'll see a pop-up to create our first event. This can be really anything from a coffee chat, an actual webinar or training. Let's create a virtual happy hour to see how that will work. You'll be able to choose your time and date as well as the time zone that your event is taking place in. And then you can choose what meeting room you're going to use. This could be a Zoom, Meet, an actual address, or if you're using a third party, you can use a link. You can also choose what members are actually able to attend the event. So live events could be for members at a specific level, or you can host Q&As for specific courses. You can also send email reminders to members a day before the event to make sure that people are actually going to attend. When you actually create the event and it is happening, you will see a live banner in the community tab where you will see that a live event is about to happen or happening for the members that are able to access the event. Now that we have some of our settings in place, let's create our first post in here. You'll also be able to pin your post. So if this is a post about how to welcome everyone to the community or maybe to introduce themselves, then you can post this to the top so that it is the very first post every member will see when they're coming into the group. You'll be able to choose a category from those categories that we created earlier. So let's make this one an announcement. You can add attachments, links, videos, polls, actions, emojis, and gifts to your posts. Actions are a great way to make sure that each member is completing the tasks that you're asking them to do, such as asking them to introduce themselves. So let's do that here. You can search for gifts on Giphy, which is just a fun way to add a little bit of flair to your posts. You can also choose to send an email of this post to your members. Again, this is a great way to stay engaged with your community and keep the retention going. You can only send these emails every three days. This just keeps from spamming your group with emails every single day. So do use this feature wisely and make sure that you're not completely overwhelming people. Once we have posted this, we will be able to see our post and we can complete the action just by commenting. Once my comment has been made, I'll see that the action has been completed and I'll know that I am done with what I need to do. For now, let's just pin this to our feed. Pin post will have this yellow tab across the top. And again, these will be the first posts that you see within the group, regardless of how many other posts are in here. You can also turn off notifications on this post. So if you don't want to be notified every time a user comments on it, this is a great spot to do that. If you are specifically just making an announcement and you don't actually want people commenting on the announcement, you can also choose to turn off comments on specific posts. On the top post, if we go into our general discussion section, you'll see that that post disappears because we have it posted in announcements only. This is a great way to just organize your posts and make sure that people are posting in the correct groups. If someone hasn't posted in the right category, you can go into their post and change the category at any time, move it to the appropriate one, or you can simply comment and let them know. This is why it's important not to have too many different categories. Keeping it simple will make it a lot easier for everyone involved. And it will also keep this top navigation pane a little simpler for people to look at. The last few tabs that we haven't looked at yet is members. This is where you will be able to see everyone's profile and you can see when they joined, what they have purchased and when and what level they are based on the badge on their icon. So you can see I am level one. You can also see all this information on the leaderboard. So this is where you can see the different levels that you're trying to achieve as well as what you can unlock at each level. And you'll be able to see a seven day, 30 day and all time leaderboard for each member of your group. This is the gamification that just makes it more fun to be in here and gives users a reason to stay active and actually talk to each other. The last few things you may want to know is your chats section. This is where you'll get notifications on chats from members of your group. And then you have your notifications settings where you can see notifications for just your one group or all of the groups combined. And then you have your own user menu where you can edit your profile, change your picture, change your description and edit the settings, your actual passwords and payment methods and all that good stuff. School is a relatively easy platform to get started on and it's really easy to add in your own content. But if you haven't actually created the content yet, then try not to be overwhelmed. It can be helpful to outline the content in another service like Google Docs or Notion, and then copy and paste all of that into the school platform itself. If you'd like to learn more about being a content creator, check out our Creator Essentials playlist. And if you would like to learn about some alternatives to school, check out our video about Circle. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.